Hi everyone, I'm Jianan Yao from Columbia University. I'm here to present our work, This AI, Data-Driven Automated Environment Learning for Distributed Protocols. This is a joint work with Rin Zhou Tao, Rin Hui Gu, Jason Li, Suman Jana, and Gabriel Ryan. Why do we need to learn environments for distributed protocols? We know distributed systems are hard to design and implement correctly due to non-determinism from lost or corrupt packets, node failures, and other complex scenarios. Failures on distributed systems, like cloud services, have real-world consequences. To prove a distributed system has some desired property, the most important part is to find an inductive invariant. Here, we use a mutual exclusion protocol to show what an inductive invariant is. If one node wants to enter the critical section, it needs to send request to every other node. And upon receiving a request, a node can choose to send a reply under some conditions. Once a node receives reply from every other node, it can enter the critical section. And after finishing the code, it can leave the critical section. The desired property of practice for such a protocol is that at any time through the execution, only one node can hold the critical section. This property is an invariant. By invariant, we mean it holds true at any time through the execution. However, it is not self-inductive. By inductive, we mean starting from a state that satisfies the invariant and take some action, we should end up with a new state that still satisfies the invariant. Unfortunately, this correctness property is not inductive. And to make it inductive, we have to provide these two new invariants, such that the conjunction of the property and the invariants is inductive. And then an SMT solver can prove the inductiveness and therefore prove the correctness of such a protocol. It is not a trivial task to find these invariants. Complex protocols may take many weeks for human experts to find the correct inductive invariants. There's a large body of work of verifying distributed protocols. IV provides a reasoning framework. Given a protocol and some invariants, IV either completes the proof or outputs a counterexample. But the IV2 does not solve the problem how to find the invariants. Later, we have I4 based on bounded model checking. But there's no guarantee that I4 can find generalizable invariants from a small bounded instance. Most recently, we have FYIC3. It has strong theoretical guarantee, but its heavy invocation of SMT solvers make it slow in practice. In some cases, it time out after a week. We propose this AI, a data-driven method to learn inductive invariants for distributed protocols. This AI is fully automated. It's guaranteed to find correct inductive invariants under some conditions and it's efficient in practice. Now we introduce the workflow of this AI. Given the distributed protocol, we first simulate the protocol and get traces, which we call subsamples. And then we enumerate all possible candidate invariants up to a bounded formula size. Then we feed the invariants and the protocol to IV to see if it can pass the check. If it passes, then we get an inductive invariant. But in most cases, it fails. And IV will tell us some invariants failed the check. And then we enter a monotonic refinement module to get weakened invariants and then feed the weakened invariants back to IV again. We repeat this process until either we get an inductive invariant or the safety property fails the IV check, in which case we will increase the bounded formula size and we redo the entire sampling, enumeration, and refinement process again. Now we introduce the three modules, sampling, enumeration, and refinement one by one. First, sampling. Given the distributed protocols, we'll first randomly choose an initial state, that is an instance size. For example, here we can choose a three node instance. And then each time we choose an action to take. And we repeatedly do this 
until the protocol terminates. And then we choose another instance size and simulate the protocol again. And we continue doing this. And these protocol states, we call them samples. After we get the samples, we observe that real environments typically only involve a small number of universally quantified variables. For example, in Rickard Agrawala protocol, the invariants are simply referring to two nodes. No matter the protocol is deployed with three nodes or 10 nodes, every two nodes must satisfy some property, and that property is these invariants. So we introduce a novel subsampling procedure. We randomly choose two nodes out of either three or 10 nodes and see what properties every two nodes satisfy. Given a template, which is a set of universally quantified variables, we project samples using variable mappings. For example, in a four-node instance, requested xy is represented as a matrix. So this zero value means requested n to n4 is false. So there is no request from n2 to n4. Given a variable mapping, let's say if concrete node n2 is mapped to quantified variable n1, and concrete node N3 is mapped to quantify variable N2, then we get a smaller sample, which we call a subsample. And in the subsample, we only have two nodes representing the two quantified variables. One sample can induce multiple subsamples. For example, if we have another variable mapping, then we get a new subsample. So later we will use these subsamples rather than the original samples for invariant enumeration and refinement. Now we move on to the second module, candidate invariant enumeration. The key property here is that an invariant must hold on every subsample. We enumerate all possible formulas under a template and a maximum literal. Here we show a formula with four literals if the max literal is set to three, then it will not be enumerated. We check the enumerated formula against the subsamples. If a formula is satisfied by all subsamples, it will be added to the candidate invariant set. If a formula can be implied by an existing invariant, we will not check it against the subsamples. Here we show three formulas. The second and the third formula can be implied by the first one. If the first one is satisfied by every subsample, then there's no need to further consider the second and the third one because they are bound to succeed. So we just skip them during the enumeration. But if the first formula is invalidated by some subsample, then we need to check the second and the third formula against the subsamples to determine whether they should be added to the candidate invariant set. The essence of our invariant enumeration is that it follows the partial order of implication among formulas. You can find the detail of the enumeration algorithm in the paper. The key property is that it gives the strongest possible invariance with regard to the subsamples under the bounded formula size. That is, let i be our enumerated candidate invariants. Then for any i prime that holds on the subsamples, i prime can be implied by i, because we know the correct invariants must hold on the subsamples. Our enumerated invariants must be at least as strong as the correct invariants. After enumeration, we feed the candidate invariants to iv. If the safety property is proved, then we are down. If not, we enter the third module, monotonic refinement. Recall that our enumerated invariants are at least as strong as the correct invariants, but they may be too strong and mistakenly reject some valid reachable states. To see how this happens, note that an invariant must hold on every subsample. This is true. But conversely, a formula that holds on every subsample is an invariant is not correct. This is because we have incomplete samples. A protocol can have infinite system states, but our simulation can only reach a fraction of them. Incomplete samples lead to too strong invariants. So some of our invariants 
may be correct on all subsamples, but it might be broken on some protocol states that we have not discovered during sampling. Starting from these two strong invariants, we need to monotonically weaken these invariants until they become the correct invariants. In this work, we propose a minimum weakening algorithm. Let's say this candidate invariant fails the IV check. One simple solution is to discard this invariant. The problem is that it may over weaken the invariant. What we propose is that we add all its weakened variants to the candidate set, including these two invariants. Previously, they can be implied by the first broken invariant, but now they need to be reconsidered. Later, we will let Ivy to determine whether these weakened invariants are correct or not. Our minimum weakening algorithm has the property that it never over weakens the invariant and bypass the correct invariants in between. We know that the enumeration algorithms gives us the strongest possible invariants, at least as strong as the correct invariants. And then we do this monotonic refinement each time we weaken the invariant, but we never over weaken the invariant. So eventually, we will reach the correct invariants that can prove the safety property. There's one case we need to consider though. When the safety property fails, there's no reason to weaken the safety property. In this case, we we'll increase the bounded formula size, either the template or the max literal, and redo the entire sampling, enumeration, and refinement process. We prove the following theorem. If the safety property of a protocol is provable with an existential quantifier free invariant set, this AI will eventually converge with such an invariant set. And the reason behind this is strongest invariance plus minimum weakening. We evaluate this AI on 14 distributed protocols, 12 collected from prior work, and two introduced by us. We compare this AI with I4 and I4 RC3. Here we show the 14 distributed protocols. I4 successfully verified nine of them, and FYRC3 also verifies nine of them. In comparison, this AI successfully verifies 13 of them. The only failure is Paxos, which involves existential quantifiers. A closer look reveals that this AI successfully learns all invariants without existential quantifiers. In comparison, I4 exhausts memory, and FYLIC3 times out after a week, neither produces any meaningful partial invariance. Now we take a closer look at the efficiency of each tool. The x-axis show the different protocols, and the y-axis show the runtime to solve them. We can see that this AI is much faster than both I4 and FOLIC3 sometimes by more than one magnitude faster. I4 fails on several protocols, which basically mean we encounter errors when running the tool. For FOLIC3, although it's theoretically guaranteed to find the correct invariance, it times out on four protocols after one week. In summary, we present this AI, a data-driven automated invariant learning system with two-stage sampling candidate invariant enumeration, and monotonic refinement. Compared with alternative methods, this AI is fully automated, guaranteed to succeed without existential quantifiers, and much faster in practice. Thank you for listening.